further east than I am, which is probably going to be pretty rare. But I just wanted to get to you guys and I wanted to talk a little bit about... I saw this video this morning. I saw this video this morning and the parallels for our country are just so spot on. This, you know, I'm going to stop this on several times. I'm going to stop this several times as we as we go through because I, I don't want, you know, the Institute of Justice does a real nice job on some things. Thank you. Uh, last night was great. We raised a thousand bucks for her. 1165 is what she was at last time we talked. So you guys put in uh, $1,100 last night for Deborah. So Deborah, uh, she woke up this morning and she doesn't have nearly the same amount of angst and aloneness that she was feeling before. So this video that I'm going to show you guys today, um, it comes from the Institute of Justice. I, I know that I've given them a hard time in the past with their coverage over uh, Terry versus Ohio, but that's only because it was really, really bad coverage. <laughs> you know, if you're going to put someone on the case, put someone on the case who knows the case. But, you know, they continue to talk about uh, Brookside, Alabama, and I want to talk a little bit about that this morning because as you guys are going to see and you're going to hear right now, you know, and, and I don't have my bows, so I'm going to use my headphones here so you guys can hear what they're saying in the video. Make sure this is queued up here. It is. So now I want you guys, every time that this, that this person says um, Brookside, I just want you to consider it America. I just want you to consider what you're going to see right here. The Institute for Justice made this video put it out this morning. It's only at 1600 views. So I thought to myself, you know, I watched the video Cope dog. Good to see you. Good morning. Hit the number one button guys. Let me know where you're from. And then let's jump right into this video so that you guys can see that Brookside, Alabama is just a microcosm of the rest of America. And that's, that's what we're dealing with. And that's why things are so shitty in the United States of America. <laughs> So let's jump right into this video. I'll try not to interrupt it too much, but this is pretty disturbing stuff when you consider that this is not just Brookside, Alabama. This is everywhere USA. This is every single place in America. Ironton, good to see you, Leslie. Um, this, this is every single place in America. This is not just Brookside, Alabama. So let me flip my camera around. And let's jump right into this and I'll make sure you guys can hear by using my own headset here. My grandson is horrified of the police now. I was left on the side of the road with no keys and it was dark and I was by myself. I just knew I was going to die. Well, you took them. No, man, what yes, you I did. You took the keys, man? No, she left her out she here like, by herself, man. She just it was abandoned right here. You just not coming back. We're going to deal, deal, deal with this. We're going to deal with this, brother. We're going to deal with this. What's your name? What's your name? So right here, you could just say the United States of America. Just substitute everything they say here that's about Brookside and just put your city, your state, your town, your borough, your township, your district. They're going to mention Brookside over and over. But as you guys know, I've been traveling the country now for nine, ten months. And I'm telling you, it's the same thing everywhere I go. No matter what city, no matter what state I go to, it's just like this. That cell phone video shows just one of thousands of encounters the Brookside, Alabama Police Department used to generate revenue for itself. Drivers are harassed, sometimes arrested, and usually see their cars towed away. Police have- That's every town in America, none more than Ironton, Ohio. Ironton, Ohio, exactly the same thing. Brookside, mostly black. Ironton, mostly white, exact same scenario. Families and small children stranded on the side of the road. The victims of Brookside's policing for profit scheme often live paycheck to paycheck. The victims of America's policing for profit often live paycheck to paycheck. 
struggle to fight back. Officers look for any reason to pull over. She calls them officers. She calls people who rape you on the side of the road, imprison you, charge you, put you in a dungeon. And this woman, as sweet as she is, she calls them officers. They're officers. That's an officer. You should respect the people who are raping you. Drivers. And sometimes just make one up. I know I had my turn signal. Over drivers. And some struggle to fight back. Officers look for any reason to pull over drivers. And sometimes just make one up. Sarah Page. They just made up that Sarah Page made an illegal blinker. The color of her car was the wrong color. And that's in Ironton, Ohio. This is in Brookside, Alabama. It's all over America. This isn't limited to Brookside. This is in your town. I know I had my turn signal. Like I said, when he pulled me over, I was in shock because I didn't think he was pulling me over. He said that he was pulling me over because my lights weren't on. So the police pulled me over because they said I was tailgating when in reality, I was just following my boyfriend. But he said we were too close. I first saw the police car on the opposite side of the freeway. Um, he got on the side of the freeway where I was and he followed me all the way down to where I was pulled over at right down here. And I said, for what? What did I do? Is there anything that I did that was wrong? And he had his hand on his holster. He said, you're casting your lights. And I was like, didn't even know what casting your lights was. I'm like, casting my lights? What are you talking about? Brookside's traffic stops are engineered to tow cars away for the financial benefit of the town and a private towing company. For example, Officers regularly refuse to accept drivers' proof of insurance. This, this sounds just like Ironton, Ohio, doesn't it? Listen to what she says again. Listen to what she says again. This sounds like, this sounds like Memphis, Tennessee. This sounds like Brookside, Alabama. This sounds like Daytona Beach, Florida. This sounds like Anchorage, Alaska. This sounds like every single city and state in America. And listen... Just take out the name Brookside here and just listen to this and substitute your name. Justice Berserker's in the room, everybody. Good morning, Deborah. Last we checked, we were at 1165. Do you have a new total for us? We raised $1,165 last night for Deborah and the struggles that she's going through. Deborah, do we have a new total? Or are we still at 1165? Uh, Deborah last night, we did a fundraiser for her. If you guys haven't seen the video, it was impromptu. I, I don't, I, I didn't plan anything. I just, with the people in the room, we raised 1165 bucks. That was the last number that Deborah sent to me. Oh, and Deborah, I still owe you 30 more, by the way. I still owe you 30 more dollars from, uh, from, from a Zelly that came in from a supporter that I didn't send over to you. So I still got 30 bucks for you coming today. Uh, Deborah, I wonder because I just saw it this morning and uh, I didn't get a chance, but I reached out to the person who sent it and I let them know that um, we're close to 1200. So the 30 more um, from Alan coming in today, uh, I saw his Zelly this morning. And so I immediately text him and said, Hey, I got your money and I'm going to get that to Deborah. So I appreciate that. So almost 1200 bucks, almost 12. Um, I'm not a left winger. I'm a conservative, John. Uh, John Blight. I've never seen your name in the room before. I'm a staunch conservative. I'm a big uh, supporter of the Second Amendment. I always carry my gun with me everywhere I go. So, you know, uh, that I'm not I'm not a leftist at all. Not even close. Matter of fact, I refused the global medication and I was at the anti-mask rally in Los Angeles. I was at several of them with the libertarians. And then I went to Turning Point USA in December. So, uh, you know, if I'm a left wing nut, what was I doing at Turning Point USA, brother? So, <laughs> way to chime in and just take, take, open your mouth and remove all doubt. Okay, so now just remember, just substitute right here your city, your town, your state, and listen to what this woman says. Listen to what she says. Testing my lights, what are you talking about? Brookside's traffic stops are engineered to tow cars away for the financial benefit of the town and a private towing company. Ironton, Ohio's traffic stops are set up to tow your cars away and create a profit margin for the cousin of the cop in Ironton. Steve Sisler's cousin 
owns the tow truck company. And in 2019 or 2020, 2021, they bought themselves a bunch of brand new tow trucks, a whole fleet of them. I wonder how that happened. For example, officers regularly refuse to accept drivers' proof of insurance. I tried to show him the State Farm insurance card that I had on my phone, and he said that he wasn't going to accept that. No, they wouldn't accept the, the paperwork that my wife showed them with my policy number on it. And they, I guess that wasn't good enough. You Nez from Dallas tried to get his insurance, and instead of getting his insurance, they put Unez in torture cuffs and damaged him, and now they're being sued. I mean, I didn't have insurance on my vehicle. I'm like, dude, you kidding me? I do this for a living. I work for an auto insurance company now for 23 years. Often, the tow truck pulls up just seconds after the stop. And this thing I knew, or um, tow truck flew by me. I mean, flew by. I didn't think anything of it. I'm thinking he going somewhere. He backed back so quick. And I said, well, what's going on? He said, we towing your car. I said, for what? They left me, my wife, and my kids on the side of the road. So when he pulled me over and they... They left him, his wife, and his kids on the side of the road. Does this sound familiar, Ironton? Does this sound familiar? Just list your city, state, and town right here. Just pop right here your city, state, and town. Just pop it right in there. Let me know where it is. And if you guys want to watch this video, I want to give them credit. So it's going to be the Institute for Justice. It just came out today. Uh, pop over there. Make sure you subscribe. They got 2 million subscribers, so they're not a small channel at all. Um, so it's called uh, t today's May 24th. Local police terrorized small town. They even got a tank. But this is every town in America. This is not just Brookside, Alabama. This is every single town in America. This is where you live. This is where I live. This, this is in Alaska. This is in Florida. This is in Hawaii. Institute for Justice, um, if you guys can see, I'm already subscribed. I've been subscribed. Uh, so, uh, you know, you guys just get to see it. Southeastern United States, Turning Point USA. Rachel, they do have some terrible views. That is true. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, there's some there's some views that Turning Point and I definitely differ on. Definitely differ. You know, uh, I don't have their view on trans people. I don't have their view on gay people. I don't have their view on cop sucking. You know, I don't share every single view with the Turning Point USA um, some of the attendees, for sure. I do not align completely, but I don't align with the left either. So we need a new third party. But I just wanted to pop on because Turning Point does have some absolutely terrible views that I all constantly tell them, you guys are stuck in the past. You know, you're bashing trans people. It's a huge mistake. Just stop it. But they do anyway. So let's get back into the video a little bit here. So this is just Anywhere USA. This is actually about Brookside, Alabama. And this is on Institute of Justice. And I've got my, my headphones up to the, to, the to the phone so you guys can hear. Here's my headphones. I'm using them as a listening device for you guys. Told my vehicle, they leaving me stranded on Cherry Avenue. No street lights. Cherry Avenue. What? They left me, my wife, and my kids on the side of the road. So when he pulled me over and they finna tow my vehicle, they leaving me stranded on Cherry Avenue. No street lights. Me, my four-year-old grandson, and my daughter. Jory's car wasn't towed. Instead, she was left stranded in the dark when police drove off with her keys. Her father eventually reached someone at the department, but when an officer returned, he denied they took the keys, even as he handed them back to Jory's father. Watch this. Well, you took them. No, man. Yes, you did. Look, look at that. The keys, man. No, sir. You she, left her out she here like, by herself, man. Yeah, she just it was abandoned right here. Why are you just not coming back? Well, because we just found the keys, man. And how you just come not on, find the keys? We're going to deal with this. We're going to deal with this, we gonna deal with this brother. While pursuing We're gonna revenue, deal. officers have physically abused drivers. This sounds just like Sarah Page where they caught Evan McKnight stealing her, stealing their wallet, and then they said, we didn't steal your wallet, and it caused two years of constant heartache. And humiliated them. For many people, the abuse didn't end on the side of the road. 
Shakitha Grant hurried to the scene where police had pulled over her daughter. When I pulled up to the scene where my daughter was at and they were searching my car, I did not see her. So therefore, I started to get worried. Got you, Zane. I'm calling you. And what they were doing with her. And I asked the police officer, you know, where is my daughter? And he was like, uh, well, she's all right now. So I didn't ask you if she's all right. I asked you where she is. He grabbed me, threw me down on the, on the hood of my mom's car. They tore my phone out of my hand and smashed it against the car. They took me to the police station. They strip searched me and then put me in the cell with a man. Sandra Harris was targeted simply for turning on her headlights as the sun went down. Concerned for her own safety, she asked for a supervisor to come. They both put me in handcuffs and put me in the car and he searched my car. I was two days, three days short of about to have my surgery and I had a prescription bottle of antibiotics. The one officer got back in the car, he said, yeah, I bet you're a drug dealer. Sandra was taken to Brookside Jail, where her nightmarish ordeal continued. Officer told me that I had to strip, take off my clothes, and make sure I didn't have any drugs. So she came in, and they had it on camera, because they have cameras in the jail cell. And she handed me a Dollar General bag, and she said, I want you to take all of your clothes off. For Brookside's victims, bonding out of jail or paying a fee to get their car out of impound is just the beginning. Next, they must go to Brookside's town court, where a judge and prosecutor have seen their salaries double as the ticketing scheme took off in this small town. I was very much surprised because when we drove up, it was about 150 people there waiting for court. I got down there like 8 o'clock that morning. I never seen so many people waiting to go to court in my life. It was around 1 2 o'clock in the afternoon before they even called me. I didn't leave from down there till 5 p.m. The town's ticketing and towing scheme is making Brookside rich at the expense of innocent people, many living paycheck to paycheck. I had to go get money from my father because I didn't get paid till that Friday. To get out of jail, we paid over $800. Oh my God. So gosh. even though I did nothing wrong and my charge was dropped, I still had to pay almost $1,000 to Brookside, to the courts, to the towing company to get my car back. Proceeds from the fines and towing fees don't go to fixing Brookside's roads or repairing streetlights. They go right back into the police force that has come to look more and more like an army unit. For a sleepy town of 1,200 residents, the department purchased semi-automatic weapons with laser sights. They secured a mine-resistant vehicle, which- Did you guys just hear what they said? Let me just play that again for you more and more like an army unit. For a sleepy town of 1,200 residents, the department purchased semi-automatic weapons with laser sights. Laser sights. They secured a mine-resistant vehicle, mine. which residents dubbed the town tank. <laughs> Newly purchased SUVs were painted matte black, and they even started a canine unit and named their dog Cash. The justice system is supposed to be about protecting the public, not turning a profit for the government. The abuse in Brookside is the inevitable result of treating vulnerable residents like walking, talking ATMs. Across the country, cities rely on fines, fees, and court costs to line city and police department budgets. The Institute for Justice filed a federal class action lawsuit to end Brookside's abuses, seek compensation for the town's victims, and ensure that there are no more Brooksides. I am fighting back for me and my daughter. No, no, there's, everywhere is Brookside. We are all Brookside, Alabama. Everywhere is Brookside. Our whole country has turned into this. The cops have automatic weapons with laser sights and MRAPs for people who, who are not dressed up like they're going to war. This is our country. This is our entire country. That's why we have to change this bullshit system because we were humiliated by Brookside Police Department and they need to be held accountable. If you got the audacity to pull over innocent, hardworking people for nothing, then yeah, you, you don't need to be a police officer. Nobody should have to go through what I went through. So I think that's the main reason that we should be fighting back because there's so many people out there with stories like mine and nobody should have to deal with it. It's, 
it's everywhere. It's it's everywhere. It's it's absolutely everywhere. Everywhere we go, I've gone from California all the way to the East Coast to Florida. I, I, I'm I, it's everywhere we go. They've created laws that make them immune. They've created laws they can run up and grab us. They've created a a, a, a criminal industrial industry a criminal injustice industry where you are the target of that they're right now they're trying to i'm trying to file my motions in ironton right now i sent someone over there with a copy of my motions and they're refusing to take them even though they know they're mine they're refusing to take my motions in ironton you know i'm gonna give a call over there i'm gonna, I'm gonna give a call over there I'm gonna call the Ironton. Hold, hold, hold on a second. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you guys hear this yourselves. I'm gonna let everybody hear this. What's going on in Ironton, Ohio, right now? This is absolutely disgusting. I want you guys to hear what they're trying to do right now in Ironton, Ohio. Listen to this. I'm trying to, I'm trying to serve three motions today in Ironton, Ohio. Yeah. Hey, hey Zane, I got you on speakerphone. There's 300 people listening right now. Um, Zane is the nice guy that, that threw, uh, threw some money into Deborah's fund last night. Thank you for contributing last night, Zane. So I sent Zane over with the motions with a, a letter from me saying that this is, these are my motions. And what are they saying there at the Ironton clerk's office? That's not an original signature. So they're saying that, but according to rule 11, they're supposed to accept my documentation, but they're violating the rule law well they handed me a thing that says uh rule 12. and so what is what is what what do they need from me zane for you to take my documents when there's hundreds of people watching now they know that they're my documents so what does rule 12 say according to rule 12 the court may provide by local rules for the filing of documents by electronic means if the court adopts such local rules, they shall include the following. And they are claiming that they have not adopted such local rules that does not include the following, which is <clears throat> any signature that is not original or electronically transferred or copied by a facsimile or fax machine. So will they take the documents if I fax them over, Zane? According to what they're saying, no. It has to be an original signature on original paperwork by pen on paper, not copied or scanned. Uh, they do not do any electronic filings, according to them. They have not adopted such local rules. Okay. So uh, the Institute for Justice video came to an end, you guys. So so uh, I am just want you guys to know that. So... So now in, in Ironton, Ohio, they never accept a signature from anybody unless it's original ink signature. Is that what they're saying? They don't ever accept? That's, that's what they're saying, that they have not adopted the local rules, which are any signature that is electronically transmitted documents shall be considered that of the attorney or party to its purpose for all purposes. But they did not adopt that rule, so they're saying no. Okay, so you don't have an original signature document. You're in Ironton. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm across the state. I can't be there right now. So what is their remedy for getting documents submitted to them? They have to tell you. They have to tell you what it is. This is Ironton Courthouse in Ironton, uh, Ohio. Their remedy and, and what they told me is they need an original signature. That's the only remedy they're willing to accept because they have not adopted these local rules of accepting any kind of electronic signature or facsimile signature or data transferred signature. It has to be a live signature, as they said. So they don't accept, uh, they have to have an original signature from every single person who goes to court in, in Ironton, Ohio? They say they don't. They did not adopt the rules that allows uh, uh, things to be filed electronically. Uh, original signature according to them they, they've that's never, what they just told because, me because if they've never so this is you guys just so you know i'm suing the lawrence county clerks and it looks like we're going to be adding the ironton clerks because i guarantee you they accept an electronical signature from someone 
I guarantee they do. I would bet my fingers on it. They've accepted a lot electronic signature from someone. Got it. Perfect. Got it. Thank you so much, Philly. I appreciate what you just did, dude. You helped me so much in my lawsuit. Thank you so much, dude. So then I don't know how to I don't know how to get them documents. I don't know how to I don't know how to serve the motions to them unless I FedEx overnight them. That would be I guess the solution. Hold on, let me let me add let me add in Bob real quick. I'm gonna add him into the call real quick. So I guess Ironton, Ohio has never accepted. Hello. Hey, Bobby, I got you on speakerphone. There's uh, 350 people listening. And and I have um, I have right now on the line, I've got Zane, who's in Ironton, that I gave him uh, copies of the, the documents, and he went to Ironton. And uh, they're saying it's because it's not an original signature that they read Rule 12. Zane, you want to read Rule 12 to Bobby? Uh, well, it is a few pages, but they did highlight with a, a yellow highlighter the, the part. Obviously, you can file motions and whatnot, but then it says, filing within the court defined, and the filing documents with the court is required, these rules must be made by filing within the court. And the court may provide by local rules for filing the court documents by electronic means if the court adopts such local rules and then following is another page and a half of all the rules that they would adopt if they had adopted electronic signatures and then it says all electronic signatures transmitted documents shall be considered that of the attorney or party um for all purposes so it basically is saying that if they would elect um, um adopt those local rules that would be no problem but they literally are telling me that they have not adopted the local rules so no electronic signatures or facsimiles or copies, only original signatures only. But where does it say that? Original signatures only. Um, rule 12. Well, that's what they, that's what they told me in rule 12, that they, since they did not adopt those rules, that there is no electronic signatures of any kind. They have uh, to be only original. Because they have to defer to the civil rules, and in several places in the criminal rules of procedure, they defer to the civil rules of procedure. Uh, to conduct certain parts of the um, the rules of court. And that's why we don't have any... Now, remember this. They can't make it up unless there's something specifically there in the rules, which rules, by the way, are statutes adopted by every state and every municipality regarding the courts. So they're not just rules of court. They are statutes. They have been legislated and approved normally by the Supreme Courts of the state. So now once this is done, uh, if they do not have, have something specifically prohibiting it, then you can defer to those rules and it has to be accepted. And, and I will say this is as far as certain, certain municipalities and courts go, they are generally wrong. They can say, well, uh, you know, if so facto, if it's, if it's, well, it works like this, is if it's not there, you cannot assume it's there. The law is very particular. You, it must be stated with specificity, whether it's, whether it's real or not. You can't say, well, we're going to infer law from here. No, unless it says specifically that they are not accepted, they cannot say, oh, well, we don't accept it. They're saying there's no reasonable person. Can... There's no reasonable person, but they're saying they've never adopted the rule of accepting electronical signatures. Is that what they're saying, Zane? Electronic yes. signatures? They're saying they've never accepted anything but original signatures. Where is the rule that they're relying upon that they can only accept an original signature? They're relying upon Ohio criminal R12. Well, now, if they're relying on R12 where you said if they adopt this, 
because all yes, these fill states, up. No, it has to be specifically stating this is the way it has to read. The court, in the alternative, if they do not accept original sign, if they do not accept electronic signatures, they only accept original signatures on documents. That has to be a clearly written law. Otherwise, what they're doing is they're they're not giving a person fair notice of violation of the 14th Amendment. So where is the rule that they're relying upon that says they only accept original signatures? It has to be just exactly like that. Okay. Because there's not a court in this country that doesn't accept electronic signatures. Okay. After- and I think specifically they're selectively trying to create something to interfere with you being able to file something in the court. That's what they're doing exactly. It's a conspiracy. That's exactly what they're well, doing. It's a con- it's it's yeah. Well, there's more going on with this case here in particular because uh, well, I won't go into all that here. There's but yeah. There's there's been- hundreds of people listening. So so okay. So then Zane, where's the rule that specifically details that they only accept electron or only original signatures? Where is the rule? Ask them that, so- Zane. So rule 12, no, no, rule 12, I know what you're reading. It's reading down, if they accept a policy for electronic filing, okay, and that mostly, you know, refers to pleadings and uh, some motions. I'll look it up here again. But unless they accept a rule that specifically allows for this, then all these other things. But in advance of this, they have to have, they, I'm telling you, they specifically have to have a rule that they're referring to a statute that says they only accept original signatures and then they can rely on it. They cannot infer something from something else that is written because that doesn't provide the any party fair notice. Fair notice is a condition and man, uh, mandate of the 14th Amendment. It's part of this, the, it's part of the uh, two elements of procedural due process. There's uh, substantive and uh, procedural due process. If there's no actual procedure that says we only accept original signatures, they cannot infer from a writing from anywhere else that it can be done any other way. You have to have it specifically written. And if it's not there, then you defer to the civil rules. Civil rule says electronic writings are, are acceptable. That's rule 11. Should I go back up there? Yes. yes. Okay, and you can also do this: is if you ever have trouble with a court, you can just you can tell them, and whether they argue with you or not, just say, "I'm filing this on demand of the party." And on demand means if they, if the judge wants to take issue with it, he can take wish, issue with it, and then we can have them rule and make a finding of fact and conclusion of law, demonstrating where where he gets the authority, the court gets the authority to deny your filing. I'm- so you make him do the work. So, so Bobby Law, repeat that for the few hundred people who are listening. So, so what Bobby Law just said was that if the clerk refuses to take the documentation, you can put the documentation down and saying, I'm filing on demand of the party. And what does that mean exactly, Bobby Law? What that means is that you are doing a demand of the party, of the people, one of the people who the court works for, to file it anyway and allow the court to rule on it. Because remember this, the clerk doesn't have the authority to deny your filing. The clerk has no authority to deny your filing. That's a judicial function. And she's stepping out of line by taking a uh, Prejudice taking position. authority that she does not have legislated to her. That's right. She 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 has no powers granted to her in this avenue. There's she has, doesn't have she's the right to do it. You file it on demand. And that way the judge has the responsibility of looking at it. And if he wants to go ahead and deny the filing, he can do it. Right. The clerk, the clerk, the clerk can't do that, not in the lower courts. So when you get that to the federal appellate courts and to the, to the, uh, um, the Supreme Court and they have specific issues of form and font and all this stuff, then they have certain authority because what you're doing is preparing a document for a group of people that are going to sit involved or in, uh, in part and they're going to make a ruling on something that's going to have a greater effect. On a I'm lower I'm counter now. Your filing is on demand is what you say for the party, for me. I'm filing is on demand for the party. 
There it is. And let the drug make the review. That you don't have authority, and just turn around and walk away. Okay, so you know, okay, so here's this. I'm fine. I'm fine. Well, was I supposed to sign these, Chili? You didn't. Are you, yeah, you got to sign. You got to sign your name on there, Zane, where your name is there. Under certificate okay. delivery. And take a picture of it. Okay. You're filing on demand, and the clerk does not have the right to refuse your documentation. The clerk doesn't have that authority. I mean, look at what they'll do, guys. The clerk is trying to push Zane around because you didn't know before this moment today on this live that the clerk doesn't have the authority to tell you you can't file those. You just heard what Bobby Law said. If the clerk says, I'm not going to file it, you put the papers down and you say, I'm filing this on demand for the party. Here's my signature on the delivery certificate. There it is. I'm walking away. Now, if... You can take this... Signature. You're filing it on demand, oh, Zane. File it on demand. You tell her you're filing on demand, Zane. I'm filing on demand. And walk away. Walk away. Well, I, I, I'm still signing. Hang on. Okay. Um, Take a picture. Make roll, ca roll camera, Zane. Judge, it doesn't have to go on YouTube. The judge, the judge has the duty and authority to review it and decide whether or not it can be filed, not the clerk. Um, More drama. Okay, take a picture. Okay. Uh, I'm filing on demand. Here you go. These are all signed. Here's your notice there. Filing on demand. Thank you very much. That's right, Zane. That's right. And now that now that clerk becomes liable if she tries to interfere and impede a filing of one of the people. This is outrageous. Absolutely outrageous. Oh, they're just. I'm sorry, you can't file. Yeah, yeah. They pulled that on me on a on a case like one time, and then I uh, drafted a letter and had it over to the clerk and the supervisor and the judge the next that afternoon, and uh, the next morning when somebody came in, they accepted filing because in that letter I know in that letter I let the uh, clerk know, the judge and that lady supervisor. And she has uh, civil liability under United States Code, uh, Title 42, Section 1983, personally and for her office. And also, there's a criminal violation there if any public official interferes with the regular goings-on of the people when they're doing something that's protected under the First Amendment. And that's where all this stuff coming to access the courts is. We have the right to access the courts. It's absolutely insane that somebody would think that they have the authority. See, now this is where the problem lies is that the government has forgotten that they, in order to assume public capacity or official capacity of any kind, must swear an oath of office or be under a, a supervisory oath to support and defend the Constitution and the rights of the people is their first duty and their first obligation. And if they violate that, they've committed felony perjury of their oath, number one. But number two, they create a civil liability for themselves. And that's why you have to be prepared at any time and every time to come after these people. That's right. That's right. Because they forgot that they are public servants. That they said, I will be a good servant Sir. to the people and the causes and writings of the constitutions and the spirit of that law. That's not exactly how it's written, but that's the, the paraphrase of the writing of their oath of office. That's why anytime you deal with any public official, the first thing you want to do is go pull their oath of office. Make sure they have one. And it says, in the performance of my duty as a butt munch or whatever it is they're doing they're required as their first duty to make sure they uphold and defend the constitution support and defend however it's drafted in any state and municipality 
But you can go up and look under United States Code, uh, Title V, Section 3331, and it'll tell you what the oath of office is for most federal employees. Title V, Section 3331. That's under yeah. Title V. I'm pretty sure that's the one. And also, in every state, you can go into Ohio and you can pull up the clerk of the court and you can pull up where her oath of, his or her oath of office is supposed to be filed. And I think under the clerks, they don't swear an individual oath, but they're under a supervisory oath, which means their supervisor, who's the clerk of the courts, is the one whose oath is a test when they have some weasel like this doing something to deny somebody a uh, guaranteed protected right. And I'm sorry, we won't let you file. Are you insane? Let's start with you reading the oath and let's read the rules. Where is the specific rule you are referring to that precludes me from having, uh, for having to do something? Where's the specific rule? There isn't one, Bobby. They're, they, they're just trying to cheat. They're just trying to cheat. Well, that's why, that's why they're going to have, that's why they're going to have the problems they have. And, uh, you know, and that, that's why you always leave open the opportunity to amend a complaint when there's an ongoing pattern and practice of violating somebody's civil rights. Yeah. You know, this is this is this is outrageous, and it's disgusting, and the American people should be appalled as somebody who is stepping in as a servant to perform a certain function in behalf of the people interferes and impedes with that right without giving proper law to support whatever decision is they're making. They're not going by rule of law, Bobby. They're just going by whatever they think their policy is, is the law. Sorry. Well, policies, if you follow all policies, they all have to stem down from the United States federal constitution. Article six states in there that uh, without going through the entirety of it, that this is the supreme law of the land. The United States Constitution, which is our protection, you know, remember this, there's no constitutional rights. The Constitution doesn't give you rights. The Constitution guarantees protection of your certain unalienable rights, which are God-granted. So now that this has happened, you know, these people doing this, that they've got to they gotta support everything they do. They're under our scrutiny. And we look at them under a microscope and we look at their job title and their job description, which are statutory, by the way. These are statutory. So if somebody says, oh, I, I and you're never this, and you and I have chatted about this. They say, oh, uh, I'm a police officer. No, you're not. You're one of the people first who functions in official capacity as a police officer, which means you have an oath of office. You have a duty to protect and and, uh, and defend the Constitution as your first uh, official duty. And you function there only when you're on, on the clock. There's no such thing as 24-7 as these people would have you believe. There's no such thing as 24-7. I'm a police officer. No, you're not. There's no DNA for police officer. You are one of the police, one of the people first. When our public officials forget that they're one of the people first, then what they do is they allow tyranny and communism and despotism to step in, which is what they're doing. And they would rather protect that than the rights of the people of which they are one. And so that's the problem with our government today. They forgot that they're one of the American people first and that we do not have any aristocracy. We do not have, you know, kings and queens and royalty here. We have people that are public servants from the president on down. They're servants. What do you think it says? Serve. That's the RV dash ants bugs. And I, that's just me being ranting, right? Ranting at the moment there, but oh no, go ahead, Bobby Law, go ahead, let mm-hmm. them know, let let them know. The people are listening. Uh, you have a a a, 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 ra- a raucous crowd here who is it, the comments are going pretty fast, so people are pretty excited about what you're saying right now. So people are well, listening. I, I, I apologize if I'm offending anybody. Just like if you work at Burger King, you're you're a servant there, and we made sure our great our founding fathers when we institutionalized the Constitution as the supreme law of the land. And if you think I'm kidding, go ahead and look at your state constitution, and I promise you, in the preamble, 
or in the in Article One, it's going to say that they, the people of the state of, except the United States Constitution is ratified 1791 with the Bill of Rights in some form like that, is the supreme law of the land. And our Constitution will be written in accordance with that. And you look, that's why every state constitution has a version of a Bill of Rights and everything. And the state constitutions and laws cannot grant less rights and protections. I shouldn't say rights. They shouldn't, cannot grant less protections and securities for the people than the U.S. Constitution. They can grant more, but they cannot grant less. And that's why we always turn to the U.S. Constitution and the case law from the U.S. Supreme Court we, when we deal with uh, issues in the lower courts because we have that federal guidance. And anyway, Very you know, it's my... I, I don't want to be ranting like this because sometimes you you have a tendency to lose your train of thought. But this is this is outrageous. This is a problem with our problem with our government, including the legislators. And, and let me help you people out with something very quickly. You know how hard it is to read the Constitution. Read it like a, an outline. Article one has to do with legislation. That's Article two has to do with the executive branch. Article three has to do with the judicial branch. The Fourth Amendment, and I got to say this, I got to address not the Fourth Amendment, but the actual uh, fourth article of the Constitution. This is a very important one. It states in there, Article 4, Section 4, the United States will guarantee to every state in the Union, so when a state becomes a state, a Republican form of government. We're not talking parties here. We're talking about res publicus, the thing created by the people, which is the Constitution. It doesn't grant for a democracy. When you hear all these weirdos talking about, oh, they're, they're, they're attacking our democracy. We don't have a democracy. We have a Republican form of government. We have the constitutions. Only communists, and I am not saying this in jest, only people who have communist beliefs and support a communist, tyrannical, despot despotic type of rule want a democracy. Look at how I believe it was Socrates was killed. They had a democracy. They had 500 people listened to his case, and he lost by a few votes, and they killed him because it was a democracy. And he said that democracy is a bad thing. They made him drink poison. Yeah. yeah it's, it's just ridiculous. We are not a democracy. We are a republic. Res publicus, two Latin words, means the thing created by the people. What is that thing we created? The Constitution. The Constitution is our where we stand on our rights and people that function in any public capacity stand under there by their oath to support and defend that constitution and ensure that our God granted rights will be protected forever. And we got to get rid of all these clubs. This is well, actually the club mentality. Oh, I work in the clerk's club. I work in the police club. I work in the, uh, uh, the first uh, responders club. You know, we have a club mentality. These people are like adolescent children. And what they're doing is they're, they're doing things that are destructive to our republic. You read the United States uh, Constitution and also read the, the uh, Declaration of Independence, and guess what word you will not find in there anywhere? Democracy. We never wanted a democracy. And that's why we don't have one. And these people... See, this is crazy, too. You know, I've actually been in court when I've questioned uh, certain of the defendants, you know, sometimes they're, well, government officials and so on, who swore an oath, including police officers. And the first thing I do is I want to test their competency in the law. So I asked them, I said, okay, you charge this defendant with this, blah, blah, blah. And I said, uh, uh, and you swore an oath, correct? Yes, I did. You know what that oath, how that oath reads? Uh, no, it's just... Your Honor, with all due respect, I'm going to hand this to the bailiff. Could you please hand this to the witness? And so they go through the process. They go through and they hand it to the witness. I said, this is your oath of office. It's filed in the county clerk's office. Is that correct? Oh, well, yeah. When did you swear to that oath? Could you please read that oath on the record? And he reads on there. It says, I, so-and-so, do solemnly swear to support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California in the performance of my official duties as a... In this particular instance, police officer, period, and whatever else it says. And I said, that's your signature, and you swore and attested this on this date? Yes, I did. I said, I have a question for you. So you swore an oath to defend the Constitution, did you not? Yes, I did. 
I said, would you please read the four, uh, not read, but could you tell me what the First Amendment to the United States Constitution is that you swore an oath to? And of course, the other side objects, and I said, objection. I said, no, he swore the oath. He's stating that he had knowledge, was not coerced or anything into signing that oath, that he has knowledge of what he swore to. So please cite something as that. How about making it easier? How about going to the Fourth Amendment? How about going to the Eighth Amendment? Can you swear and attest to anything you have knowledge of regarding the Constitution you swore to defend and protect? No. Your Honor, with all due respect, I'm going to uh, – this, uh, this uh, witness has already obviously impeached himself, and I ask that he step down from the stand because he is not competent to testify as a witness for the state. There you go. Boom. Boom, Bobby Law. Boom. And we're, we're, we're getting ready to launch Bobby Law's channel in the next week or so here. So you guys are going to get to meet Bobby Law. He's going to have his own channel. You have hundreds of people. We've, we've, we've gained 100 viewers since you started talking. Uh, the, the people can't wait for you to have your own channel, Bobby Law. They're excited to have you speak directly to them. I'm excited to promote your channel. I can't wait, Bobby. So, uh, Zane, uh, you got to get over to uh, Philip Heald's office. Get over there as quick as you can, if you would, please. Uh, man, the people love it, dude. The people are loving your words, Bobby. You gave me goosebumps up and down both arms. The whole time you were talking, I mean, I showed the people. You can still see them. There's still some remblance of the goosebumps on my arms. But, man, that was absolutely amazing, Bobby. You totally inspired me. You reinvigorated me. Tears come to my eyes. Like, this is the passion that we need in, as Americans to take our country back. You guys, this is Bobby Law. You got to hear directly from the man himself. We did a fundraiser for Bobby Law a month and a half ago. We raised 2,500 bucks. We're gonna do another fundraiser for Bobby Law at the end of this week because he's been doing legal work for, uh, he's been doing, how do I say that properly? He's been doing administrative work, uh, administrative paperwork with a few people who we're involved with. And so, you know, we're gonna launch his channel uh, at the end of this coming week here. So you guys can look forward to seeing him and uh, it's going to be really, really exciting because as you can see, like people like Shauna and Bobby and X Factor and Joe and Chuck, I've surrounded myself with people who are based on principle, who are based on value, who are based on knowledge, not just people who are along for the ride holding on. People, when they say, you know, only 10% of, of a company does the work, not on this team, 100% of the people do 100% of the work. Uh, Christy's in the room, everybody say hello to her. Okay, Zayner, uh, uh, Bobby, I was gonna send over to Philip Heald next, but he also has to go over to the Ironton Jail and pick up the oaths of office that we applied for. They should, we, we pulled the oaths of office of all of the people involved. So you should have that. Uh, Zane, you still there? Yeah. So, you, um, Bobby, you wanted me to send him over to the to the jail first, over to Philip Heald's office first. Uh, the prosecuting attorney's office is fine, but remember, this is in in every case, you know, you know, especially your case, and it's no different than any cases. You you need to have pull everything from the docket, start from start to finish it's a public record you need everything that's been filed from day one including the original charging instrument or instruments oh he's got to do that there are. he's got to do that there at the courthouse you're at zane you want to pull every single public he can come back there last he can come back there last okay or if you want if uh you can have somebody else do it but um yeah, filing on demand is we've had to do that in numerous courts. And I, I don't know where these people think they get the authority to deny somebody's filing. It's not that that would be the court that has that authority itself, uh, not not some peon clerk. You're there to process paperwork, homie. That's just the way it is. <laughs> but anyway, I've got, yeah, I'm up to my button alligators on things to do on file. So. All right, I'll let you go, Bobby. Thanks. Uh, Zayner, uh, uh, um, I'm also going to call the clerk. I'm going to call the Ironton uh courthouse myself um, make sure that you get all the documents i would just get them while you're there get every single document that's a public record for my case that they filed since the beginning and uh, get all those and then we need all the evidence from philip healed and from the lawrence county jail oh chili can i say just a couple things before i go here go ahead bobby you got the floor okay I'm, i want to say something to the folks that are listening out there i said 
I want to tell you guys, not that I said, but what I was thinking, I just want to tell you guys that, you know, we are the people of these United States of America, whether one or many, we are the ones that hold the bastions of hope, liberty, and freedom for the world, each one of us individually. And once we go to function in public capacity to do anything, we do that within within our mind and knowledge that this is why we're doing it, to make sure that that bastion of hope, liberty, and freedom will be upheld for all the world to see. And you people out there, you have more power in your little pinky than the entire United States government does. You just don't know it yet. But it's been doubt upon you from the inception of our Constitution. So, you know, prayers and safety be with you all. Love you, brother. I'll Love talk to you later. Love you too. Talk to you soon. I'll call the Orange and Courthouse. Right now, Zaner. Thanks, Bobby Law. Everybody for Bobby Law will let you go. And Zane, I'll talk to you in the next 15 or 20 minutes. All right. Okay, bye, guys. Um, I don't have it. Send it over. Okay, so I'm going to call the Ironton Courthouse right now. You guys, I'm going to keep you on the line here as we do that. So let, let's just let's just give them a call. I actually have their number. I already have all the Ironton numbers listed in my phone. Uh, Bobby Law is, uh, you know, just, I think I was looking for Bobby my whole life. I was looking for someone who had the same passion and, and love for America that I do. And I finally found that person. Uh, and so it's just, so a little surprise call first. First, first we call uh, we call Philip we call Philip Heal, Philip Healed. We call him first. You've reached the law office of Philip Healed. Leave uh, your name and number and a brief message. I'll call you back as soon as I'm able. Thank you. Mr. Heald, this is Jose DeCastro. This is my fourth attempt to reach you when you were so kind at the last pretrial hearing and you said that you wanted to have a conversation with me. It sure doesn't seem like it. I've left my number four times. I've called four times. So now I'm just reaching out to you to let you know that I've sent one of my representatives there working as agent for me to pick up the, the, the discovery, the body cams, uh, the transcripts to pick up uh, any evidence that you have as far as discovery so that I can get those materials. Um, you, you can give me a call back. You do know my cell phone, so please give me a call back. I would appreciate your time, Mr. Heald. Thank you so much, sir. I hope you have a wonderful Tuesday afternoon. And now I'm gonna give a call over. Thank you, uh, by the way. Thank you very much. Um, uh, thank you, Philip. I appreciate your help. I appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate your help. And now let's give a call over to the Iron Courthouse and let them know. Ironton. Oh, you. So here's the Ironton Municipal Court. I'm just going to give them a call. That that's that's the number I'm calling. This is a a public building. Uh, that I'm going to give them a call real quick. And just let them know that um, municipal court. Hi, my name is Jose De Castro, and I just had a, a, a friend of mine come in and drop off some motions and file them on demand. And I just wanted to make sure, while there's you know thousands of people watching and listening, that those documents were filed on demand. I was with Zane when he dropped those off, and that you guys are in violation of the law. I've already... We weren't with him, and they haven't they haven't been filed yet. No, they are here. You don't have the right to not accept my documents. You you don't have that power. It was not granted to you. you the judge can decide if he's not going to accept my documents, but you don't have them. What's your name? What's your first and last? The judge name? isn't here right now. Well, that's fine, but I need the so first if and last. If he gets back, then he can look at the paperwork. What's your first and last name, ma'am? I don't have to give you that. Well, I'm going to I'm going to list you in the federal civil rights lawsuit because it's a conspiracy against me. You have to accept my paperwork. It's up you don't have the Your right. Your paperwork to... is here. The paperwork is here. Right, but you have Nobody to tell me who you are. Nobody did not accept your 
paperwork. It is here. But you gave the guy a hard time and tried to say that you don't accept it. You don't understand. I'm not that guy. I'm going to go ahead and follow through with what I say. I just need to know how to list okay, you. Okay, that's fine. Well, then okay, you thank are a, you. Can you please you tell me? You have a good day. Please tell me your okay. name. Please have tell a me. good day. Thank you. I asked you your name. And that's the Ironton Municipal Courthouse. Let's try. Your call cannot be completed at this time. Please try again later. So the en este momento, no se puede realizar su they've, they've blocked. They've, they've blocked. They've blocked my number. They've blocked my number. They've blocked my number. The Lawrence County Jail has blocked my number from calling. I didn't call them over and over and over again. This is just ridiculous. I can't. I can't reach the Lawrence County Jail. Lawrence County, Ohio Sheriff's Office. If this is an emergency or to speak with dispatch, press 1. For the jail and extraditions, press 2. For evidence, press 3. For the CCW, sex offender and BCI, FBI background check, press 4. For report copies, local background checks and civil process, press 5. For sheriff's sales and warrants, press 6. The drug task force, press 7. For the detectives, press 8. And to reach billing and payroll, press 9. To repeat these options, press star. If this is an emergency, or to speak with dispatch, press 1. For the jail and extraditions, press 2. For evidence, press 3. person you are calling is unavailable. This is a violation of your 14th Amendment right. Now those clerks, when I go to Ironton, they're going to be filmed. They're going to be filmed. You're going to get you're going to get to see what the clerks look like because I was really nice to them, and then they've decided to act like this. So you know what? Let's play. You want to play? I'll play. Want to play? Okay. Let's play. Let's play. Link Star, I'll see you on here again, man. I got to see your name a few times, but yeah, I like what you say, man. Let me just let me get to know you a little bit, Link Star.
Linkster 420. Answer Police Department, this is Cindy. Hi, Cindy. Is Pam Wagner in? She will be in in about a half an hour. In Can I take a message? or Yes. Sure. M my name is Jose DeCastro. Hello. Hi. How are you? Okay, you want me to have her call? I'm good. You want me to have her call you, or do you want to call back in half an hour? What do you, how you want to do it? Well, I'm just calling because I have a, a gentleman there named Zane, and he's there to pick up my tray for my iPhone that she forgot. Uh -huh. Okay. So, so I just wanted he has a letter from me with my signature on it, but I just wanted to give a personal phone call from my cell phone number so that Pam would know for sure that it's me, so that I could get my property back. Okay. okay. All right. Well, is he there now or he's going to be there? He's going to be there soon. He's going to come by there. All right. Okay. And I will you, be there. I will tell her. You, and uh, it's just she a, wants to call you back. She will. It's just a little tray and my SIM card for my cell phone so that it works. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Yes. And what's your name? I gotcha. Cindy. Okay, Cindy. Thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Okay. No problem. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. So let me let me let me make sure I have the right number here. Let me make sure I have the right number. So let's just look it up. Now I just got to be careful. Just got to be careful. Just got to be careful. I'm 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 pretty annoyed because you know we've worked you know we've worked really hard on on the legal pursuit that we're taking. As Shauna knows, you know. When, when, when I say we don't stop, you know, she'll tell you, she'll tell you, I, I, I personally, I never stop. I don't ever stop. I don't even date. <laughs> I don't stop. I don't ever stop. So when you have a, a clerk who's going to deny the motions that we've worked so hard on to put together properly, it just, it, it, it. It just is so frustrating because the clerk doesn't have that right at the Ironton Municipal Courthouse. She doesn't have the right. It just, it just, it makes me upset, you know, because, you know, uh, Bobby Law is, is, is working hard, you know, putting stuff together and Shauna is working hard putting stuff together and X Factor Law is putting stuff together. And, you know, we, we don't ever stop working because there are lots of people that we're helping right now. Lots of people. There are lots of people in the queue who need help. I get an email a day. I get one email a day. At least one, sometimes several. But let's not be hyperbole here. Let's go really. One email a day at least that starts off with, help me, please, please, Chili, help me exclamation 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 please 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 there is a girl who is going through the dungeon rehab jail dungeon jail ankle monitor jail rehab jail ankle monitor jail she's been going through this cycle for so long she's begging me to help her every day i get an email from her saying please help me please stop the nightmare every day every day Every single day, if I don't plan time to work out, if I don't plan time to take a breath, I won't get one. I won't get one. If I open my emails right now, and I don't want to show you guys um, anybody's email. Um, so I, I just want to see how many emails I have in here. You know, if I go in, I, I've got 11 emails right now. From the time I checked my email until now, 11 people have written me to tell me their story or that they want my help or that they need someone to just please, can you help me file a, a, a demand for return of property? You know, so, so there's so many people. Wow. Wow. I can't show you the email, but wow. Wow. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry you're going through that. I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry. I wish I could do something for you. I'm not, uh, I haven't passed the bar yet. I'm going to take the California state bar 
and then I'm going to take the Ohio State Bar. I'm going to take the California first because I don't have to have my law degree to take the California State Bar. So I'm going to take that one first. And as soon as I pass the Ohio State Bar, I'll help you, man. I'm so sorry, dude. I'm so sorry. I wish I could help him. You know, when you when you read the stories every day of people who are writing to you and they're begging you to help them and you want to help them and you can't and there's 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 20 emails a day, you know, from people and a few of those are please 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 get me out of here, please, please, please. You know, it's 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 just it you know, I thought about giving my emails to Shauna and having her screen them because sometimes it's a little bit overwhelming in your chest and in your heart for 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 what these people are going through. And it's it's just atrocious, you know. So so I'm gonna I'm gonna shift my focus here and just uh Okay. That was just hard to, it was just hard to read that guy's story just now, you know, and I want to show it to you, but I don't want to tip off who he is or where, what rehab he's in or what he's going through, but he's going through hell. The guy's going, it, it's, it's, it's not for me that I feel the emotion. It's for another person, you know, no, I have not smoked. I have, uh, I have moved on from that. I have moved on. I've separated. I've, I've parted ways. I've parted ways because of, uh, you know, you know, I mean, anybody here, the 450 people here, you, you know, it's, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. It is what it is. I just want to focus on that. We were able to raise uh, $1,200 for Deborah last night. Um, if you guys didn't see the video from yesterday, uh, take a look at the video from that we that we did last night for Deborah, we raised her 1200 bucks. She, she needs three grand. I mean, just she, that's how much money she's going to need to get through her next few things. But you know, she, she, we did raise her 1200 bucks last night. I actually went back and I changed the, the caption and I put in there her, her cash app, her Venmo and her PayPal. It is proper in there. So let's focus on the positive, what we did last night for Deborah, you know, um, and so Deborah, she's right there. It's Justice Berserker. That's her uh, YouTube channel right there because she was, uh, there she is. There's Justice Berserker. Good to see you, Deborah. Uh, I think we're at 1200 bucks. I got 30 more dollars coming for you, Deborah. I have 30 more besides the money I already sent to you. I'm going to send you another 30 um, from, from people. You guys hit the like button. We're at 287 likes. Just, just reach over, take your finger and hit the like button if you would, please. Just reach over, take your finger, and hit that like button. Just, just take your finger and just, just hit it. If you're on your phone, close the chat, hit your like button, and then, and then do it again, um, and then open up your live chat again. Let's uh, make sure everybody hits the like button. I got to try to grow as fast as we possibly can. This channel shadow banned, so uh, share the videos. You know, get it out to the public. Um, the Ironton Municipal Court. What you guys don't understand, what you did today, is you've added yourself to a federal civil rights lawsuit. That's what you've done. You know, and and I, I'm not going to tolerate it. I'm not going to put up with it. You know, I do understand the constitutionality of law and you're violating my 14th Amendment. You're, that's what you're doing. And I'm not going to tolerate it. I'll simply add you to the lawsuit. You know, we have, uh, you know, we have tracked down a couple of people now. We actually have their addresses and I'm going to go after them legally next week as soon as we finish the things we're doing here in Ironton on Thursday. So, you know, people can say and do whatever they want but I will get you. I will sooner or later get you. And when I get you in federal court, you're going to find out. You're going to find out. I haven't been studying constitutional law for 20 years so I could take abuse from people on a public stage. I won't accept it. I will not accept it. And I will come after you legally. And I will not stop until I take you down. And, and the, the people who prank called me last night, I got a hundred prank phone calls last night, right? I, I don't answer the phone, so it's fine. But you know what? You're done. You're done. You just, you just, you got my focus now. And so that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go after them like a bull is what I'm going to do. 
you know, so it is what it is. It just, I, I guess I'm just fired up right now because like, number one, Bobby Law got me going, you know, emotionally talking about our rights and our law and, and, and the way the law is set up for us, how, how the government is supposed to be servants for us. You know, we are the primary factor. You have more power in the tip of your pinky than the, the entire government. So that got me all fired up. And then these, these, these Ironton municipal court clerks who I've been nothing but nice to. I didn't put them on camera all those times. That changes now, ladies. That changes now. Now America's going to get to see who you are. I spared you. I was trying to be kind to you people. So I guess the gloves are off. Because what they believe is they believe that they're going to put me in a dungeon. That's what they think. You know, the whole plan, in case you guys didn't know, is to lock me up. To lock me up. The If you read the affidavits that were submitted by the cops and by Pam Wagner... Um, what that's gonna, what the, those affidavits, they're trying to set me up for a felony. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to set me up for a felony, which is crazy. I haven't done anything felonious. I don't belong in jail. I don't belong in a jail. I haven't done anything wrong to anybody to go to jail. You see, I haven't hurt anybody. There's no victims in my past. You know? <laughs> You know, we just got to stay focused on the future. So I, I reached out to, um, you know, you know, you guys can maybe help. Um, maybe I want to reach. I want to talk to um, to Bao. You guys know who Bao is? Um, what's the name of his channel? His name is. Uh, what's the name of his channel? What's the name of his channel? Uh, Bao. What is it? He's got a channel. His best friends with James Freeman. Clash with Bao. I want to talk to Clash with Bao. I want to have a phone call with him. Of course, he'll record it and I'll record it. But I want to have a private conversation with Bao. I act Clash with Bao. So if you guys will let him know that I want to have a, a, a conversation with him. Yeah, I've been training like a dog. I've been training like a big dog. So I've been training hard. I missed the last four days because my neck has been kinked. But uh, I think it finally is mostly out now. I think it's finally mostly out. My, it's mostly out. So yeah, I want to talk with Clash, with Bao. I want to have a conversation with him on the phone. You guys may not know it, but that guy's pretty talented. I went through and I watched some of his videos. He's pretty talented. You know, I, I hadn't seen any of his stuff before. Uh, uh, before I heard that he was, you know, threatening to shoot me. <laughs> so, but then I went through and I just scanned through some of his stuff and and he's got some talent, and so I wanna I wanna have a conversation with him on uh, on the telephone. So if I could reach out, I sent him a message. But if you guys would uh, let him know that I'd like to have a phone conversation with him, uh, that would be great. I'd like to talk to Clash with Bow and see if he uh, is willing to have a phone conversation with me. You know, because he is a talented guy. I've never seen his stuff, so uh, I took a look at his stuff, and he's got some skills. The guy's got some skills. You know, a, a lot of these guys who are who are alpha males, they're gonna challenge other alpha males because it's it's a it's a it's a it's a dog, it's a it's a pack animal thing, I guess you would say. You know, I know he makes fun of me every day. I know, I've heard, I I've heard, I've heard, I've heard Bao makes fun of me every day. Amazing. Uh, you know, he could just get in line. Everybody else, whoever whoever doesn't want change, whoever's against the the change movement. Oh, is Bao loud right now? You guys are more than welcome to tell him I'd like to have a private conversation with him. I'd like to have a private conversation with Clash with Bao. I mean, I don't even know if that's possible. I don't know if the guy's completely off his rocker or if he could actually have an intelligent conversation that doesn't have to be broadcast. You know, I talked to some people on the phone. I'm not going to tell you who they are, but I talked to some people on the phone uh, who are really big, big YouTubers, and, and I don't publish the conversations. I record them all. But I, I don't publish those conversations because I consider it a private conversation. Oh, was he, Mandy? Was he one of those guys on the mass hall thing when I was, uh, yeah. Is that right? He's, he's that far gone where he just want, he just thinks that I'm some bad person or something like that. Oh, did he, Nikki? I thought he got whooped. Nikki, I think, uh, Nikki, I think James Freeman got whooped. And so I think now would be a good time to lay out my parameters for my, uh, for, for my debate with Lackluster coming up this week. Um, you know, 
uh, first of all, lackluster, if you're going to debate me, you have to answer the questions and I have to answer your questions. And you know, that's, that's the big one. That's the big one. Okay. That's cool. I reached out to him. I reached out to him. Okay, Nikki, we, I, I, I got your hatred. I got your anger. I'm good, babe. I'm not going to block you from the channel, but just let me, let me continue on with what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Um, thanks for your input, Nikki. You know, you're, we're probably more on the same side than we are against each other. Um, okay. Okay. Nikki got you. Got you. Nikki's telling me how I got whooped and all these things. Okay, cool. Cool. I mean, we probably agree on more things than we disagree, but you know, there's always going to be, um, there's always going to be, uh, factions. There's always going to be factions. And so you're going to have people who are going to be dedicated to a certain faction and they're You know, they're going to be loyalists to that faction. And so, you know, you can't get caught up in the minutia of worrying about what other people think about you. You know, you just have to keep going. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just, I'm just keep going. Yeah, it decentralized and it's decentralized peace officers. Actually, I don't use the term law enforcement, uh, decentralized peace officers where there is no ranking. Everybody has the same rank. Obviously, there'll be shift uh, supervisors and uh, shift leaders and and then, uh, you know, uh, people who, who do different levels of work, but they're not captain, lieutenant, sergeant. Those things all go. Trans yeah, that's right. Thank you, Citizen Broadcast. Uh, you know, they, uh, they, they, they have, um, they have, uh, you know, there's no point in giving people rankings when the number one thing that you're serving is the inalienable rights granted by God through our bill of rights. So there's no real need to have a ranking system within people who swear to uphold the constitution and the bill of rights. Uh, they take an oath of office for those things. And so there's no need to have rankings for those people because once you take an oath of office, you no longer need to have someone above you or someone who's below you. You're the same. You're both upholding the rule of law and upholding your oath of office, which is to, um, which is to protect and serve the constitution. You know, that's what you take an oath of office for. And so we don't need rankings. We need to, to, to truly train people who are peace officers for a decentralized system. You know, and I'll, 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 show, I'll show it to you guys a little bit because, you know, why not? Let's just get into it a little bit. And let's talk about this because I really want you guys to understand the system. And a lot of people didn't even see this video. So this is on my own channel. I'm going to show you guys uh, what transparency actually is and what it means. And then you guys can make your own executive decisions whether or not you you like it. Got a screenshot of it. Thank you. Got a screenshot of it. Thank you. I appreciate that. I sure do appreciate that. Sure do appreciate it. So this was seen uh, 4,000 times, I guess. That's, that's not a whole bunch. But this is the, the, the system that I laid out called transparency. And um, this took me, you know, months and months to, to figure out how to put this together. But the whole point is, you know, that we have a decentralized system that's based on rule of law, you know, and the, 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 the fundamental question that I was asking, what I was asking people was without the camera rolling, there's no justice. Is that true or is that false? Without the camera rolling, there is no justice. Is that, is that true or false? You see? And so that is true. And so then when you get here, when you get, this is our current system of a centralized law enforcement agency, which doesn't work. Look at these centralized places. Power corrupts, but centralized power absolutely corrupts. Okay. And so, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's this. It's transparency 2022. And so it, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. 4,000 people have seen it. It's pretty good. But they've probably only seen little bits and pieces of it. And so that's the current system we have. And so this is what we're selling. We're, we're getting rid of all of these things. We're getting rid of all of these things. We're going to change out all of these things. Um, we're going to get rid of all these and get technology and an application. 
you know, we don't need any of these things. There's no one, this isn't going on. Oh, you guys hit the like button, sorry. I'm sorry, I, I, I gotta keep more focused on. So we're gonna get rid of those. And then, you know, the basic idea of freedom is that we, we're based on liberty, that we're based completely on a liberty system. And we're not based on a law enforcement system. And so transparency peace officers, the way they work is they have a 360 camera on the front and back and it goes off to two different agencies it goes off to two different agencies i guess i talk with my finger a lot don't i but it goes to the the transparency agency of the montesquieu and then when when you're when your video if you're the cop if your video is being seen then you know you're every floor in the building so that that no one can hide if you've done something wrong your video if this transparency officer is is if, if this transparency officer is violating someone's rights, you'll get to see, got it. Thank you so much, I appreciate that. Thank you so much, I appreciate that. So, so the transparency officer, he sees out the front and the back, but the streaming video goes to the transparency building and to the Montesquieu building, so that there's no hiding injustice. Okay, now this is probably the crown jewel of understanding what a statist is versus an anti-statist, right? We decentralize peace officers and put them in cubicles and double-decker buses all over, the, all over the city, all over towns, because then all of these peace officers are the same rank. Their obligation is to the Constitution. Their oath of office is to the Bill of Rights. The, a decentralized peace officers organization based on color coding because they're tribal. Everybody wants to be competitive. Let them compete. But what are they competing for now? They're competing for. They're competing for. Um, I'll show you. So so you know the, and the whole idea and and by the way you know I don't know which drone those are. I I don't know which double decker bus this is. These are just big ideas. I mean, obviously, this isn't the exact bus we would use. Those probably are not the exact drones we would use. I'm just showing you guys a better idea. There's no need to stuff people in the back of a tiny car, even if they're violent. You can put them through a double-decker. Oh, is it more expensive than the wars that we go to? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, we, we have plenty of money, just not for the right things. We, have, we had enough money to take on the, the global flu, but we didn't have enough money... So then when you get into a decentralized uh, organization of peace officers, you know, their primary job is to protect rights. It's not, so then all of these different decentralized double deck buses, right? Uh, you have decent, you have a sharp in every one of these in case you actually do have to shoot someone, but they don't walk around with guns anymore. No more guys walking around with guns and metal on their chest saying that's, that's just not how it works. And then, you know, you start with the reason you break them up into six different color groups is because you have competitions over, you know, who's the best of the best, who, who, which is the best yellow team, red team, who's the best negotiator, who talks people down. You know, we want to decentralize it, which is the opposite of statism. Statism wants centralized power. A decentralized peace officers corps would have nothing to do with the centralization of power. You see the difference? It's a big difference. It's night and day. It really is. Okay, I'll, I'll do another breakdown of this another day. Anyway, I've got a lot to focus on today. I've got to get my motions, make sure my motions are in. I got to get all the evidence from Ironton today, so I'm looking forward to doing that. Um, I do appreciate you guys coming by. If you guys don't have an indestructible trifold, please go by deletelaws.com and get an indestructible trifold. Um, you know, I did lose some orders in um, April. In April, we lost the, the WordPress site that we used, it crashed. And so I lost some orders in April. If you send me in a screenshot of your order number and, and your order, I'll fill your order. But just make sure you send in the screenshot because there's so many trolls and stuff that when I get someone that says that they, they didn't get their order, it's often a troll. Last night we had people come in saying that they gave money 
to Deborah and they didn't. It was really sad. So, so just stay super focused. If you guys didn't get your order for your trifold, please send me a, a screenshot of your order and then I will send you your trifold out in the mail. Uh, so someone didn't get their order from April or something and so I just got that today. Okay. And then uh, listen guys, you know, no matter what these people do, no matter what these people say, we're not going to stop. We're not going to stop. We're not going to stop under any circumstances, under any conditions. Their Cope Dog just put the link for delete laws. You guys get your trifold right there. Get your indestructible trifold. If you don't have the $15, put, put a free trifold in and get it for free. But get one in your car. If you can afford the $25, please do buy an indestructible trifold. That's, that's, that's what I do for a living is I sell that indestructible trifold. I do appreciate it. And uh, I got the We Don't Stop t-shirts coming out here pretty quick. Um, Shauna, I'm going to call you when I hang up this phone. I got to talk to you. So, Shauna, I'm going to call you when I hang this uh, phone up. And I want to say thank you to everybody for, for coming by. Uh, thanks for supporting, for supporting what we're doing. And, and I hope that, you know, you're, you, you know, just like the decentralized peace officers, I hope that you of your own and that you refuse to stop until we get to the change so desperately needed in this country. So God bless you. God bless the United States. And just remember, we don't stop. We don't stop. We don't stop. All right, I got to get out of here. I'll see you guys on the next one. All right.